Over to France is now for free speech news in The Times. And it sounds like the force is yet to be fully denazified on this front, too, as we mentioned earlier. Well, this is actually a very, very interesting investigation by Toby Young's Free Speech Union, looking at the thousands of hours that various police forces up and down the country have been investing in equality, diversity and inclusion, and the mm. thousands and thousands of pounds that were spent but they compare it to actually freedom of speech. How much time does each particular force look into freedom of speech, upholding freedom of speech, being trained on that? Mm. And actually, it's practically nothing, which explains why so many police forces arrest people for having gender-critical views, for instance, yeah. or for praying outside abortion clinics. And you realise that our police forces have been captured by an ideology and they're investing all this money into EDI training schemes when the reality is it should be going into keeping our streets safer. So I suppose the question is, we were saying earlier, the Met is institutionally racist and all the rest of it. How does these two fit together? What it seems to me is that the police has a culture of wanting to understand what you can arrest people for and then going for it, you know, and, and having some kind of enthusiasm for that. And the problem with free speech versus the uh, the diversity, equity and inclusion and the, uh, you know, the, the weird pronouns and stuff is that one is a set of transgressions which the police are entitled, therefore, to pursue and to prosecute. And the other one is a set of uh, mitigating circumstances, which will mean that their arrest will not lead to a, to a, cause, a case reaching court. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know you mean about looking for arrests, but of course they are just following guidance. I suppose it comes from young police officers doing what they're told. But it's these non-crime hate incidents and things mm -hmm. like this that are the problem. There's been hundreds of thousands of them since 2014 when they came mm -hmm. in. Luckily, there's been this new code of practice drafted which Suella Bradman's been part of, currently the most popular person on Twitter, <laughs> which has improved things a bit. Yeah. But, I mean, remember, in 2017, Amber Rudd was done for a non-crime hate incident. She was Home Secretary at the time. Wow. She referred to migrant workers. This is how insane this is. And this is the kind of stuff police are being taught, and they're not being taught, as we've discussed, freedom of expression under Article 10, which is, yeah. which is what this is all about. And the FSU asked 32 police forces if they were doing anything on this. Only 25... 25 said they, they had no or, or no or inadequate training on Article 10. So I mean, my sense, I don't want to be unnecessarily sort of caustic about the police, but my sense is that they're not particularly philosophers, you know, that they don't, they don't want to engage with the issues. I can't imagine interesting, open, roundtable discussions going on about this. They want to be told, what is the law? What can I arrest people on this basis or not? Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and I think it is all about the messaging at this point, isn't it? I, I quite agree with you, Sam. And you think about it as well. It's far easier to arrest someone for a tweet yeah. or, get, you know... Issue them with a non hate crime, whatever they're non -crime called. Hate it, incident. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the one. Then it is to actually go and investigate somebody who is a serial rapist, for instance. Well, also, or they've been told, I mean, this is something that came out of that, that school recently, isn't it? They have been told clearly, they've been briefed mm. that part of their job is to try and maintain good community relations. Mm -hmm. And there are some communities which have very cleverly noticed this and understand how to weaponize that anxiety within the police office, the, poli the police service. And there are other communities who, who, are, who are less, I suppose, media literate, who are less up to speed with that, you know, what, what the implications of that are. It's like somebody who say, you know, wherever there's a subsidy, there's a scam. This is kind of like there's a bad incentive at play there, right? Yeah, definitely perverse incentives. Oh, and can I just add quickly, because the Free Speech Union are a big part of the story. I think we're all probably on the advisory board of it. Yes. Yeah. Full disclosure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Get the headed note paper out. <laughs>